Well, hello guys. Welcome to my crib. This is my happy camper that we've had for our Iceland journey around the ring road. And we drove this baby all the way around counterclockwise around the entire island of Iceland. So this is the happy camper one is how it's coded on the website. And I have affectionately named her Bessie. She's been a very good girl, except for a minor setback with um, this yonder tire popping pretty badly um, towards the end of our trip. We will start with the front, I guess. All of these camper vans are two-wheel drive stick shift. Come on around. If you're gonna rent one of these babies, bring a 12 volt inverter to AC converter. And we bought this one on Amazon. So we have two power plugs plus four USB ports. And this thing has been a lifesaver for charging all of our phones, Apple watches, um, computer, just all recharging batteries, drones, cameras, whatever. This You need this. You can rent it from the company, but it's not as um, good the one they have. So this was only around $20 on Amazon and I can link you guys to this particular one in the description below. And right now you can see we have our iPhone chargers hooked up because we're going to be headed to the airport pretty soon and we just want to get our phones charged and then we'll pack that up. Um, they have a nice little happy camper instruction booklet that will tell you anything that you need including how to operate the heater and how to change a tire um, with step-by-step -step instructions and they even have some cool places to visit in here. I'm getting attacked by midges right now. There's lots of little flies out today that are attacking us. They're little midge flies, and we're gonna try to do this as quickly as possible before we get eaten alive. Um, other features in the front, we've got nice cup holders, two on each side that have been pretty useful. They fit the cups that are provided back here, plus if you buy any sodas or anything, they are sufficiently sized. And this is a nice charging station. Wes has been using that to charge off all of our batteries. If you go to the grocery store, make sure you keep the little bags as trash bags. We had a carabiner that was hanging up here behind the seat, and then we had our little trash, ba trash bag, but we packed everything up, so we were trying to get it together today. Most of the camper van companies do not rent automatics, and you also can't get a camper van, as far as I could find, with four-wheel drive, so you cannot drive any road that has an F in front of it with these camper vans. The F road is four wheel drive only, and it takes you through some rougher areas. If you have towels, bathing suits, anything that needs to dry, we've been blasting the heat in here and drying it on the dash. There's a nice little inlet here if you wanna store gloves or anything like that. And another note of what to bring with you, if you have a phone clip that suction cups to the window, it will help you a lot for GPS. This baby is equipped with Wi-Fi. We paid, I think, $50 for the whole trip to have access to Wi-Fi. It only works while you're driving and then randomly, maybe when you're stopped, but then it fades off even when the engine's on. So you can rent a portable Wi-Fi device from different companies. If you need Wi-Fi all the time and not just when you're driving, maybe you're better off with that. It's about twice as much. But for 50 bucks, the Wi-Fi was pretty reliable wherever we, wherever we went as long as it was working. Um, so you can use your GPS on Wi-Fi. Just bring one of those suction cups to hold your phone. We had that, it's already in the bag and that's super useful. There's Bluetooth in here, so you can sync your, you can pair your phone to the Bluetooth radio and play your music, download some music beforehand because some of the areas will have spottier Wi-Fi since it's more remote. Um, so make sure you've got some good jams going on your playlists. We've got emergency tools below the passenger seat, which includes, um, like a road sign that we put out when we were changing the tire. It's a little triangle that reflects. I picked it up and handed it to Wes and it literally fell apart in his hands. Didn't even do anything. Um, there's also the equipment to change tires below the seat. It's very basic equipment, but it worked, so that's great. Um, all right, let's head up to the back of the pad. All right, so. Welcome to my kitchen slash bedroom for the last eight days. Um, there's a nice little section under the chairs that you can store things. We put our flip-flops under here, so at night if we had to run to the bathroom, we could throw those on and quickly 
go use that instead of having to put our big boots on. This is a no boot zone back here because it gets very dirty, but since I'm about to sweep it out anyway, I'm gonna go in with my dirty boots. Dirty boots. As you can see, you cannot fully stand in here. You have to crunch down and my back did start hurting after a couple of days from, you know, having to keep packing the suitcase and putting the bedding back and everything. So just be prepared for that. We have running water. That's almost empty, this moves up, so you can actually end up spraying everything if you're not careful. Um, there is a little plug in here if you need to do dishes. Washing my dishes in the camper van. You can seal the sink up. We brought this water bottle from the airport in Los Angeles, and we just kept filling it up here with water. The Iceland water is drinkable, and if it's not, it will tell you that it's not, but you can just fill up water at the campsites and at gas stations. We're about to do that. There's a water fill up right over there. So we will fill up our tank, which is on the other side. I'll show you in a second. We have three different drawers. These two, you just push them to open them. We got cups, bowls, we got a pot, we have plates. So that's all there. There's four of each of those. Up here, we have a set of four knives, forks, spoons, a brush to clean your dishes, soap, some dirty towels to dry things, um, ladles, spatulas, knife, knives, can opener. It's got everything that you need. When you get in here, this will be empty. You arrive at Happy Campers and they have a whole section of food that people have left behind because they didn't use it all and you can take it for free. So it's a free for all. And when you go back, you can leave the food that you did not use. We grabbed a little bit too much and ended up filling up our drawer right from the beginning and didn't end up using a lot of it. So only grab what you actually know that you're gonna be eating because this is the only drawer you get. So in here, there's also a little pot holder and a cutting board. So we got our Nutella, which is a essential part of life and you must have Nutella. We bought some white breads, so that was our breakfast, and we bought little packets of cappuccino mix and little packets of Swiss Miss hot chocolate. So we've been boiling the hot water, ladling it into the cup, and mixing the hot chocolate with that. Um, what else we got in here? We got some candy, we got some cracker bread that we put cheese on, these delicious cookies that are like chocolate wafer cookies. So this is all you get for non-refrigerated food. Keep that in mind. This is our fridge. You can set the temperature and turn it on and off on the side here. I would recommend just leaving it on. It's a little smelly when you get it because people have all kinds of funky food in there. There's a lot of room in here and you can fit quite a few items in there. We bought some cheese, some bread, some juice. Uh, what else we got? Apple. <laughs> and that'll happen. That's happened a lot. This thing just... It's supposed just, to. It's not supposed yeah, to fall on your head. No, it's... <laughs> got some of this flat kokur flatbread. It's like Icelandic. You have a map over here that I think you can draw on. It says your map. So we've been marking all the places we went. So our airport was here. We went up here. We went around, now we're around here somewhere, so we're about an hour away from the airport today. There's curtains over here that you can close at night with little Velcro, Velcro points, and there's some flies hanging out. <laughs> are those dead flies? These are not light proof curtains, but they do the job well enough, I think. There's so many flies sitting right there, Chris. You can open them. And the store opens as well. Now, what's stupid is that you cannot unlock this back door as far as we've been able to see from the back. So if you lock the car at night and you need to get out, you have to either get out from the side or climb to the front and unlock it again. Unless you have the car keys back here with you, which we don't. You have to slam the store really hard to close it, but if for some reason it's not closed, the car will let you know. That's the other thing, there is a rear view camera on this vehicle. I didn't notice that until the second day because it's so little and I kept looking over my shoulder to see things. So put it in reverse and wait a second and there is a camera to help you navigate that. It's in the dash so you'll see it once you put your gear in reverse. Here we have a pan that we have not needed to use and we also have our oven. 
our stove. Gas canister, you just pop it in here. You set this to lock. Oh, it's locked, it shouldn't be locked right now. Okay, so it'll be unlocked, you set it to lock. You make sure it's in off and you can boil your water or use the pan and that stores nicely in here. Everything has a home and you wanna make sure that every night you put everything back where you've designated it to go. It'll make your life so much easier. We have extra gas canisters down here. They give you four extras. We've only gone through about one and a half in our trip, but we've eaten out a lot. So you can also buy extras, but they said for a week trip, four is sufficient. There's a heater over here that is different from the car heater itself. We were told not to run this more than 30 to 60 minutes. So here's what we've found is the best plan of action if it's cold out. You close the doors, obviously. You put your gear in neutral and you turn on your engine and you blast the heat right when you get to your campsite. Okay, do your thing back here. Get it nice and cozy, get in your PJs, fold out the bed and everything. Right before you're gonna go to bed, turn it off. This way you'll also have some Wi-Fi access for a little bit, even though it doesn't like to hold up while you're not driving. So the engine's on, but the Wi-Fi can drop out still. So you wanna get it nice and cozy, then you turn it off, lock your car, and go to sleep. At night, at some point, you might wake up. We woke up between three and 4 a.m. every night from being cold. That's when you use this guy. So then I would set my watch timer to 30 minutes, turn this on, and let my watch wake me up 30 minutes later when it was nice and warm, turn it back off. They also rent sleeping bags, which we did not rent, but we did run into a couple that rented them, and they said they were super warm and great, so I think next time I would definitely go the sleeping bag route. This is our out. <laughs> that happens constantly, by the way. You think I would learn. Okay, we have a little reading light here that we turn on at night when it's dark. You also have the light up here that you can keep on. So there's a separate battery that runs the reading lamp, the fridge, and the heater back here. And it's charged by the alternator, and there's a solar panel on the roof of our vehicle. If you kill that battery, not only will you not be able to use it for the rest of your trip, but you will be liable to pay for it. So be careful and don't run the heater more than they tell you to. And this doubles over as a couch and our bed. So first of all, you can store things under here. This does not fit a full-size suitcase, which we learned the hard way. Pack light, if you can avoid it, don't bring a suitcase. We had to because we had so much camera gear with us that we really needed every <laughs> nook and cranny in here that we could use. We rented some chairs, two of them. And we thought that would be a great idea. If every day had been like today, we might have used them to eat dinner outside, but it was way too cold. It was a stupid decision. All they did was take up room for the whole trip. Just make sure you're actually gonna use them if you rent them. Maybe spend your money on a sleeping bag instead. I would not rent those again, especially because a lot of the campsites have tables out there where you can eat, so you don't really need to ever sit in a chair. There's also a little duster back down here. So we will clean out the back of this after I get done stomping through here with my dirty boots. And, oh, there's a feather. There's a first aid kit under this chair. Some basic stuff. And there's also a fire extinguisher if you decide to set fire to the vehicle with the stove. Down here is also our heater, the Webasto heater. And it takes about 10 to 15 minutes to get hot. It's a heat pump system and once it does get going, it is nice and toasty, so it does the job. Um, the only downside is that you can't really run it for too long. These are the blankets that come standard with every rental, and I think that they do a good job with that. You get a white blanket that can live on the bottom that you lay on top of, and then you get two nice fluffy blankets, one for each person, plus an additional two lighter blankets. So those are pretty great. And then we had brought one sleeping bag that we opened up and folded out over us. So. It was, I'm a cold person, so I would probably next time bring warmer pajamas. I just didn't want to pack any more than I needed to, but I was pretty chilly for some of the nights. Bessie's a good girl. She kept us as warm as she could, so. All right, so that folds back down. So when you're ready to, see, this will happen constantly at night because you just constantly open. When you're ready to go to sleep, you would want to make sure that you have everything positioned under here that you need to get down there for the night pull out your blankets, and then there's a little handle down here that you're gonna reach into. And I can actually stand. Our suitcase has been here, so I haven't had the luxury to stand right here, but basically you just yank on it, 
and now you have a bed. So that's pretty nice. You can access this part of the storage from outside the store, but the inside storage cannot be accessed in any other way. Two more notes on the bed before I move on. First of all, we had our heads over here, feet down there because the store is pretty cold. The store also lets in a lot of cold air. So I was using my scarf and kind of making a little barrier. Another thing is that both sides of this bed have a bar running through it that will kill your spine after a few days. Our backs are really hurting and um, we're thinking that these might be installed backwards. Because this is flat. Yeah. You would want to lay on a flat thing if you're going to put a bar. I was using one of the blankets to kind of position under my back because it was starting to really hurt. When you're ready to fold this back up, you want to do it slowly and hear, wait until you hear two clicks. Two. And then you grab this and fold it. If you don't hear those two clicks, this thing will fall down while you're driving. It happened to us a couple times for the first few days. Come on around and I'll show you the water tank. You can fully remove this tank and carry it over to the water fill up station, or you can just bring the hose over and fill it up from here, which is what we've been doing. It's easier. It holds enough water for about two days. Water itself will drain directly down below the car when you run it through the sink. So there'll be, don't put anything weird down there because it's going straight to the floor. Damn flies. <laughs> ah, okay, there's, we're being attacked by flies. We have to go drive to return this camper. I can't take these flies anymore, so I'll see you guys next week on Tuesday. Peace.